Middlesex's poor run and the vitality blast continued on a forgetful night in Chelmsford where they lost to Essex by 61 runs. Stevie Eskenazi won the toss and opted to bowl on a pitch which was being used for the third time and that showed the total at 13 for 1 in the fourth over. The hosts then lost Michael Pepper in the next over, John Simpson with the leg side take which left the Eagles on 28 for 2. Anderson struck again with the final ball of the power play. Matt Critchley with a leading edge which was well held by Chris Green. Six overs gone and Middlesex had reduced Essex to 39 for three. It could and perhaps should have been even better. For Rose Cushy had been dropped behind in the first over and was given another life on 36. Green struggling to see the ball as it came out of the sun. The fielder then having to leave the field with a cut chin. Essex reached 67 for three halfway through their innings and Kush's good fortune continued. Another life was offered and then he edged Anderson for four as he reached his maiden T2050 from 33 balls. Middlesex may have thought that things were going against them and Tom Helm lost his discipline to offer Kushi an easy hit for his eighth boundary. Green returned only to see Kushi whack him down the ground twice off successive deliveries. The match was starting to run away for the visitors. This wicket then was important. Max Holden doing well to finally get rid of Kushi for 67. Those runs coming from 40 balls. Five to go and Essex moved on to 129 for four only for Tom Wesley to then go large. The home team were looking for a big finish. And talking of big, this shot by Paul Walter was simply enormous. Anderson was perhaps the pick of the Middlesex attack. He grabbing his third wicket by bowling Wesley for 16 at 145 for five. The bowler finishing with three for 42. Walter completed his second T2050 of 31 balls and with him still at the crease, an imposing total was on the cards. Helm removed the man at the other end in the penultimate over. Simon Harmer on his way to seven before Jason Berendorf kept things tight in the last one. Essex ending on 186 for six. So to the reply and Eskenazi heard the death rattle to the fourth ball. Hardly the start that Middlesex wanted. Both openers were back in the hutch inside two overs with only 10 runs on the board. Holden out for a single with a thick edge which ended in the bucket hands of Critchley. Simpson was promoted to number four and struck his second ball for a six which would have brightened the mood in the away dressing room some. And this shot would have improved it yet more. The sound as the ball hit the bat, a real crack. Such was the power and timing behind the shot. Cracknell ensured that the fourth over was a good one for his team. He also clearing the road. Middlesex on to 38 for two. Palmer brought himself on to deliver the last over of the power play and he tossed up his first ball, persuading Simpson to hit. And he did just that, but straight to Walter. He departed for 20, the visitors at 43 for three after six overs. Cracknell's innings was now the crucial one and for a while it looked like he may not disappoint. Not many batsmen are able to take on Harmer, but Cracknell did, striking him for maximums twice in an over. One which put Middlesex on 61 for three after eight and still very much in the match. Alas, he fell in the next over, bowled by Critchley for 29. In came Luke Holman, who belted the second ball he faced into the distance. Middlesex getting to 74 for four from 10, 113 still wanted. They were ahead of their opponents at this stage, but still needed some big middle overs to stay in touch. But the Essex spinners turned the screw in spite of Holman bringing out his trick bag. When he hit Wesley to Harmer to fall for 24, the match was up. Middlesex left to get 82 from the final five overs. 
Jack Davies was then flung in front to Critchley for 23. While Green was comfortably stumped to give the leg spinner his third wicket. Helm showed what might have been by launching Aaron Nijar over the rope. But it was 117 for 8 when Helm somehow managed to get the ball to Critchley. Five runs later, they were nine down, Anderson giving Sam Cook his second wicket in the over, the 18th of the innings. And the contest was completed with a dismissal which pretty much summed up Middlesex's night. A suicidal run which saw Walla Luita on his way with Middlesex all out for 125. So that meant a fifth loss in a row, this one by 61 runs. Middlesex will perhaps be thankful that they can now regroup the championship returning before a trip to the Oval next Friday.